Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today I'm gonna show you my just finished propeller clock. Um, I was not sure if I should place this video in the every maker should have one uh, video section, uh, but I think most of us electronic nerds are also cl clock nerds when it comes to uh, applications where interesting electronics concepts are used in a clock display and I, I'm sure you already have seen on YouTube or anywhere else uh, such propeller clocks. I always wanted to build one of my own in a globe shape just to display the earth globe and the time um, but I simply don't find the time. So it was quite a happy incident that I think three and a half years ago Electra magazine published uh, this uh, Altiprop or propeller clock. Uh, it was designed uh, in one, from one of the hobby electronics nerds on the Elector Labs forum or section. And finally Elector made a uh, kit out of it. Uh, we will discuss the, the, the details later, but I think first of all let's turn off the light and step through the different display modes. Uh, you might see there's a little bit of uh, jitter or wobble. Uh, that's simply because the, the propeller itself is not 100% centered, although I took every measure I could uh, to give it a perfect centering and it's also not 100% balanced, the two wings of the propeller. So there's still a little bit of improvement to be done, but I think it's already working now and um, it looks worse on the camera than uh, in real life. Uh, so if you go one meter away, you don't notice the wobbling. So now let's turn off the light and uh, see what we what what other display modes uh, we get here so doesn't that look beautiful in the dark except for the little wobbling and um, the author or the uh, constructor of this clock has in integrated a lot of options and I will go simply without any comments or without many comments through them step by step. We have a little rotary encoder with a switch just to set uh, the different uh, the, the menu items like time and date etc. And how and with what options time is displayed. So you can see the outer ring uh, is obviously for the seconds and uh, these are two color LEDs, that's why every item can be displayed either in yellow or in red. And here we have the temperature. Well, there the author made uh, a little mistake. Uh, you might know that's an 80 mega 328 like in the Arduino as a control microcontroller. And the system has an internal uh, temperature diode, but um, which usually is only plus minus three degrees Celsius, but we don't have 26.9 degrees Celsius here in the lab at the moment. It's uh, six or seven degrees lower. And um, he obviously didn't take into account the self-heating of the 80 mega when it's working with uh, full speed. And so he should have subtracted a few degrees Celsius um, from the display or from the red value from the internal register. And you can see the temperature is even going up a little bit. Uh, that's why the self-heating uh, in operational mode of the 80 mega continues. And I will just go step by step through the different menu items. So obviously the, um, the, the outer ring for the seconds has a lot of options and now we have changed from our digital display to, uh, how is it called, uh, to the 
uh, hands of a clock. So kind of um, analog uh, display. You even can change the language. So I've set it to English because most of the viewers will speak English. You can even set a day and night mode because it has an internal LDR and so when the, the light goes uh, down below a certain threshold then the motor speed and the, um, the brightness can be reduced in nine steps. Of course here I've for the demonstration taken full speed and full brightness. And at the end, he even has hidden a little Christmas tree for the Christmas time. We will come to that in a minute. What I don't like very much, um, the, the letters and the numbers are a little bit distorted. So he, he apparently didn't take into account the, the distortion when you go inside where you have to display the different um, uh, parts of the letters or numbers a little bit smaller. But anyway, it's kind of, here we have a Christmas tree display. And um, you even with a, an, an Apple iPod uh, remote control, you can even uh, switch between the settings, not only with the rotary encoder like I do now, but also with a, re a little remote control. So basically that was it. Let's go to one display type that I like. Okay, let's leave it at that. And now uh, let's take a look at how the author managed uh, to get this uh, really working and how it works. So here I've laid the, the propeller clock flat on its side and let's take a closer look at how quite sophisticated uh, the author has managed uh, to put all the functionality inside and that it's really working uh, very stable. Uh, now power comes from a uh, with a 12 volt barrel connector. Um, the whole circuit uh, with all LEDs on uh, takes about half an amp maximum. Uh, so we are at six watts uh, maximum. You can see some uh, switch mode power supply regulators. Um, one is of course for the five volt digital section. Uh, the other one is for the motor drive and uh, we have an interesting chip here the famous uh, Maxim uh, DS uh, what is it uh, the real time clock 31 through uh, 3231 um, which has uh, which needs no external quartz and has an uh, internal temperature compensated quartz inside and it only has a deviation of 2 ppm uh, which translates to a, a maximum of uh, what is it 50, I think 15 seconds per year uh, so you don't need any GPS or um, any radio controlled uh, just set the time once uh, with the rotary encoder with its switch oh Oh, it already is going on. So you can see here one functionality of the switch that is just turning the propeller clock on and off and with a short push of the button. And um, center part is the 80 mega 328. And we have uh, the LDR for the switching between day and night mode. Well, what's quite f once again it has turned on a accidentally shorted out two wires and so come on 
So I have to be a little bit more careful because, uh, of course, we have now uh, all the power here. Um, uh, we have the 6-pin ISP header for reprogramming the 80 mega in case uh, the software or the firmware is still improved. We have a little infrared receiver for the remote control, which I still uh, have to buy or I already have bought it on eBay, but still waiting to arrive. Um, here, this little LED uh, is the um, well, it gives the uh, the position sensor because when we turn it around, you can see at the end of the propeller wings there are two little um, infrared receivers, and this gives the the zero point for each rotation or for each half rotation and. Uh, this LED here is just the infrared LED to give the reference point for the start of each half turn of the propeller. So everything quite clever managed and here we have some other power stuff uh, and sorry um, we um, there are also two drivers for two MOSFETs um, just because we have a center tapped primary transformer because the trick with a propeller clock is of course uh, to transfer the energy to the propeller without any contacts um, because contacts simply wear out too fast. Uh, so this is a, uh, a little self wound transformer and I can tell you although I have no problem in winding coils and transformers I've done dozens of them but this was really the hardest um, or the most difficult transformer I ever had to make even though there is a step-by-step -step manual how to do it it really was a pain in the ass and it took me days really days uh, and it's still everything else but perfect I even in the end I had no hope that this thing would be really working but except for the little uh, decentering of the propeller um, and th that there is still a little imbalance. Uh, concerning the imbalance, the author even provided some uh, solder, uh, how do you say, uh, <laughs> some place where you can put solder on just to uh, properly balance the two wings of the propeller and also on the back side if we flip it around here you also can see some solder pads now you can see them some solder pads uh, to replace the balance and we have uh, we have um, an, uh, four other maxim chips uh, here you can see the motor is simply a uh, small computer fan which you have to manually rework you have to take out all the uh, how they call the wings of the of the fan and it's re it really took me I don't know 24 hours all in all uh, just to prepare the the trans the two uh, windings of the transformer the primary and secondary winding and uh, to to grind off uh, the the fan that was really hard the hardest work I've ever done in winding a transformer uh, but anyway it transfers um, more than I think one or two watts and that is uh, uh, that you need that uh, you can see there are two rows of 24 LEDs so all in all you have we have 50 LEDs uh, each one is a, a two color LED and the uh, the propeller is, uh, is also micro, uh, microcontroller controlled. We have the same 80 mega 328 and some uh, we have of course a rectifier because from a transformer you get AC and you have to transfer that to DC and again a little switch mode uh, controller and in the end the power for the LEDs you even have to look it up if it's regulated or simply switched. Anyway, the, the Maxim uh, chips on the backside of the 
propeller. Uh, they are Max 6957. I think these are constant current uh, drivers with a lot of outputs, although you still need four of them uh, to drive all the 50, or all in all it are 100 LEDs. Uh, 50 dual color LEDs makes 50 LEDs. Uh, so all in all, quite cleverly um, designed. Yeah, uh, the, the, um, the AC current from the secondary winding is rectified and then there's a uh, switch mode power supply, of course, for the 5 volt uh, rail for the digital logic and still can't find um, if the uh, LED drivers are also, ah, it doesn't matter so much. So anyway, let's just turn it around and not much to see on the back side. All the electronics except for the, the LED drivers um, is on the front. And um, you might have luck that Elector perhaps still, still has some, um, the boards, the two boards are, um, readily assembled so you don't have to do any any solder work except for the through hole parts the, I think I had to solder two or three uh, components and the rest was all what, what really takes your time is winding the transformer and um, you make one mistake and you have to start again and at the end I nearly was at that point where I was not longer sure if this thing would ever work um, because after 24 hours uh, of doing winding and winding and uh, yeah, you finally want to finish, you make one mistake and well, in the end it worked, although I still have to recenter the propeller wing and put a little weights just to make it perfectly balanced. But anyway, I'm quite lucky. Um, I'm not sure if the the article in Electro magazine and the schematics etc. if they are for free download. Uh, anyway, I will give you the links to everything about this uh, clock down in the video description. And now for a final demonstration, let's turn it on again. See if it works. It starts with two LEDs, then it starts in low brightness mode and then switches to full power. And of course, because now we have a white background, you can see it very well. But uh, I'm quite happy that I now have a partially self made and not 100% uh, balanced propeller clock. But anyway, from one meter distance, it looks very nice and um, the um, the display just appearing in the air is a fantastic effect. So that was it for today. Well, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and see you next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.